Hi guys and welcome back to another video from me Evan and today we're going to be talking about Chris Chibnall's era, summarising it and um, we're going to be doing this again because my last one I wasn't really happy with it so um, yeah this one's going to be perfect as. So um, but before we get into that please subscribe because I know that 92% of you are not subscribed so hit that notification bell get subscribed for more videos I will do in the future, and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, we're just going to be summarising all of Chibnall's era and going through all the stuff that I liked and didn't like. And, you yeah, know, I guess from the fun out and uh, the um, uh, bio, what did Chibnall do to who? Yeah, so, uh, no, what did Chibnall do to who? Uh, well, what does he do to Doctor Who? Um... He made lots of things interesting and a lot of things terrible. Uh, basically, from that out. But um, the main thing is about Chibnall, he tried his best and you can't blame him for anything. He is a massively good writer, very talented, much better than I could ever do at all because I'm only a teenager. He's like how whole, how many old years? And. Uh, He's been a big fan for so many years, so I can understand why he likes being showrunner and all that sort of stuff. And I will be talking at the end who I'd like to see be showrunner. So, um, yeah, so um, all seems uh, very good. Let's get started with the main video. So, as you guys probably know, Chris Chibnall didn't sit well with me as a showrunner. Or as a writer, to be honest. But um, I feel like he was telling people, oh, make it different, make it different, make it different. And if you make Doctor Who too different, you're going to push away all those fans who've loved the show for years. And also, you just kind of destroyed what Doctor Who was about. And, um, yeah. But I think the main problem was uh, when... <laughs> Lots of other stuff went down, like such as the companions. They just did nothing. Like they weren't as important because every single Doctor Who companion up to this point had kind of been very important. Like uh, Rose, Bad Wolf. But I don't really like Rose anyway. But um, also uh, Martha Jones, the one who walked the earth, whoever that weird name was, and also um, other stuff like um. Donna Noble, Dr. Donna, uh, also Jack Mortal, and all that sort of stuff, and, um, yeah, and also, like, the stuff like, uh, Amy Pond, Girl Who Waited, and, um, Rory the Roman, and, uh, let's just go, I'm just going through Rogue Gallery now, um, Clara Oswald, The Impossible Girl, and up until here, Bill Potts, the Cyberman, and Nardole, the Android. So, to be honest, we do have a lot of makes them very important. All the companions are very important, as they kind of are. But um, it kind of makes all the show a little bit, when you come to it, um, the era comes off as a whole, it's not being, well, the best. But um, I would have personally have loved to have seen more of a different approach um, on the way that they would have made the companion, say, more important. But in this case, they just really didn't make the companions that important, which I think was a massive loss, because the companions are supposed to be the audience surrogate, so they're supposed to see it through their eyes, and in this case, they just didn't, and I feel like that was... A big loss from Chibnall and the whole of the cast and the whole of the team, to be honest. But um, if I was in that writing position, I would definitely choose that as the main thing. Like, uh, take other shows, for example. Um, just trying to think now. Um, oh, take Rose. Uh, Rose, the first episode of the reboot. You see it through Rose's eyes, her perspective, all that sort of stuff. Which is all very good. And also... I'm trying to think of comedies where they do it, like uh, Rodney. Uh, if you ever seen Only Fools and Horses, uh, th they do it from Rodney's perspective uh, in the first episode, 
where he gets to know all of Dell's friends and all that sort of stuff. So if they'd done that, it probably would have been a lot better approached. But in this case, they didn't, which I found was a big loss uh, from their case. Because you could have done it more from the perspective of Graham and seeing his life. But um, not really. We just had a few shots of um, Ryan and Graham riding bikes. Which I don't think was that great of an information. But it did give us the possibility to find out about his, um, his problems with riding a bike and learning how to do that. And also introduced us to Grace. But I think that was all very good. And the plot Grace throughout series... Uh, 11 was very good, I would say it's quite okay, but um, stuff like The Timeless Child, uh, specifically, um, that stuff was all a bit weird to me, personally, a little bit iffy, and uh, we'll come back to The Timeless Child later. Now I'm just going to be getting on by talking a little bit about, um, a bit, a little bit about the, uh, Fact of um, episode one. So episode one, Woman Who Fell to Earth, series eleven, episode one, was actually probably one of the best. I think like really engaged the audience, and that cliffhanger was very good and very good. So after that episode, I was well, oh yeah, it's okay, quite good. And uh, the one thing that shocked me when I first watched that episode was um, the main thing was the style of the episode it looked like a movie it was all the cameras and high budgets and all that stuff it looked mad i was like what is this a film or like a actual doctor episode because it didn't feel right it didn't click with me on that case but um other than that it kind of worked a little bit but then uh what was it called now the next one ghost monument I thought that was quite good, quite good, quite good, but I kind of, there's nothing stand out about it. There were a few running up and down, like, quarries, but then nothing really else. <laughs> I actually sound like Chris Chibble, then, running up, you know, things like that, but no. Uh, then thinking about other stuff that kind of happened during that is um kablam i really like kablam because you had the thing about the um the bubble wrap and you had to pop it and if it did then they would kill them i actually found that was a very dark thing to do with with that to be honest a little bit weird but i found it very interesting and um yeah and also when it comes down to some of the stuff that um it kind of does show kind of fell into the gap after we got a couple of episodes down the line uh such as um demons of the punjad and uh arachnids in the uk i think it went downhill a little bit more mainly because um why why on earth did we have to in the arachnids in the uk what was all that about like why about all the American president stuff and all that sort of stuff. I can understand that they wanted a Trump kind of villain, but uh, they didn't really need to do it, to be honest. Uh, I think they were just doing it. There's a little bit of a joke, but it didn't really need to happen, to be honest, did it? But um, it happened anyway, and we did get um, Jack, uh, the American Jack, whatever, as a villain. And he was actually quite good, but I mean, yeah. Up to you decide. But um, yeah, that's kind of my overview of series 11. A little bit about it. I didn't really. You don't want to talk about it too much because series eleven with me didn't sit that well. It was like rockier than anything. There's no plot, no story, no no element. No, I would prefer a series a bit like series one because Chibnall, when you said you were going to start from fresh, think about how um, Stephen Moffat did with series five. He kind of started off fresh and did it fresh, but he still retained that essence of the show that we love and all that sort of stuff and um which I absolutely love but um other than that yeah it kind of worked like um yeah so I like the fact that Moffat's works better than your obviously reboot um but um 
I do like your kind of take on it, but I could see that you've been wanting to do this for years, and it's very understandable, because um, if I was in your shoes, I would absolutely love to be head writer, because you've got all of that at your controls, you could include whatever you wanted to, and it's your, just your take, and um, I understand, uh, Jibble. So, um, yeah. As I uh, move on quickly. Then we had the Dalek special resolution, and I can definitely say that was amazing. And if you'd done that all the way throughout series 11, we would have been amazing. And you would have been, every every single fan would have been like, oh yeah, you're amazing, and all that sort of stuff, if they'd said done that originally. I can see why, but that was probably one of the best things you've ever written. And uh, Resolution, I found, was very good, actually. And it's just a shame, really, that the whole of your Series 11 wasn't like that. Yeah, so it wasn't like that uh, for Series 11. Which is a little bit of a shame, but what can you do? At the end of the day, I would really just hope that you do stuff like that. And Series 12 uh, definitely received. And you had, finally, Monsters and Villains return. And you did them absolutely amazingly. So, Chibnall, I award you for that. I award you for that, and uh, I hope I just hope that series thirteen's like that. Um, I don't I don't agree with you on the finale, but we'll get to that in a little bit. But um, yeah, and uh, all the few bits. Uh, yeah, so we began we started strong with Spyfall Part One and Spyfall Part Two. If you had done that, see, if you had done all of these stories earlier, you would have been Told it in regard as probably one of the best writers, but it's a shame that all your stories kind of have to happen in the middle. So, Spyfall Part 1 and Spyfall Part 2, I th would definitely say that that was blooming amazing. What you did um, was absolute, absolutely incredible, and it's actually shocking that you didn't think about doing it before, uh, which I find is actually... Quite sad, but you really brought back the master. It was like master, and then like all that sort of stuff. It was like it was actually really cool because then he had the uh, shrinking thing, um, tissue compression eliminator, and he like shrunk down the original O, which uh, happened previously. We don't know which Doctor O met, but um, we don't really know yet. But I have a few ideas. I feel like maybe it was David Tennant or Matt Smith. I'm not really sure, but that's a nice little callback anyway. Um, yeah, so the nice shrinking tech that we finally brought back, which we haven't seen in years because um, I think it was... Um, I don't think we've seen it since the 80s, I think that's right. Or was it the 70s? I can't remember. Um, yeah, so that was really nice that you brought back a bit of that. And also the Silurian gun in... a. Uh, Oh, what's that one called? Um, don't worry, I forgot the name. Uh, Nicholas Tesla's Night of Terror, I just remember then. Um, yeah, so you incorporated that in there. You still could have brought back um, the Silurians and the Sea Devils. The Sea Devils, we always thought we were going to see back, but Praxius happened, and we know how that went, and it fell flat on its face. Uh yeah, so uh, that kind of happened, and that was okay, mildly okay. And a few other things that kind of happened throughout the series, when we get back to um, little bits. So we have now, we're going to be getting to Fugitive, Fugitive of the Jadoom. And what happened in the Fugitive of the Doom, you asked? Um, a lot of stuff that I absolutely love, Chibnall. Chibnall, if you'd done this even more, like, I keep on saying this, if you'd done this in Series 11, you would have been regarded 
as a very good writer. But you had to wait. I don't know why. Why? Why did you not just keep it in the actual... You just should have done it. Why didn't you? So, um, yeah, it was really kind of, you know, left it like that. But, um, Future of the Doom brought back Captain Jack Harkness. And finally, oh, finally, after nine years, repeat this, nine years of not being on Doctor Who, he was back and better than ever in some ship he'd stolen. And then he said something about the lone Cyberman, the lone Cyberman. Um, then we've actually met the lone Cyberman, Hashid, I think his name was, or Hashid, I can't, I can't really remember. He was an okay villain, but yeah. Um, yeah, so it was um, good to see Captain Jack back. And uh, John Barrowman like, was like, oh yeah, I'll be back. And it was like, super great. And finally managed to do it. And I really appreciate the fact that he came back. And it was really nice to see him back. And then he appeared again in... Um, I can't remember the newest special just gone. Well, I say just gone. It was it was about like seven months ago, so it's quite a long time. But uh, we'll be hopefully seeing him again in series thirteen if all goes well. And um, yeah, so that was kind of uh, good to see him back and all that sort of stuff. And that was very very uh, nice to see them back. And yeah, and then. We came to something that I thought was actually amazing on Chibnall's part. The idea of having an incarnation that has nothing to do with the official timeline. And I think that was probably the most thing that you could have ever done. That was probably one of the best things that you could have ever done. And I'm trying to put, put out in this video the positive things I like about Azira. Next we'll kind of get to the bad points, but... There's two things I do like and a few things I didn't like. The fact is, the things I didn't like, where she fit into the canon, we will probably never know at this point, and uh, the time the child happened, and we'll get to that bit. I mean, but the things I did like what you did in Fusion of the Doom, the Jadoom. The Jadoom will look actually amazing. They didn't really appear in any, much of the story, but I mean, they're actually very good, and... Um, Looking for the Doctor, the Fugitive Doctor, and I think it was all great. The Roof Doctor was probably brilliant. I mean, she was just amazing, really. I do like the way she interacted with uh, Jodie Whittaker's Doctor. I thought that's very nice. I love it when uh, two Doctors meet up. It seems very good. And this one was just amazing. And um, I feel like if uh, like he had been like, done like that before... Yeah, I do understand that Jodie Whittaker's chip... Uh, Jodie Whittaker's Doctor is very happy, and this one was kind of more like darkish, which I found was very good. Reminded me a bit of Pete Capaldi, uh, Pete Capaldi, uh, who we sorely miss. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, Pete Capaldi's era was brilliant, but um, Jodie Whittaker's um, era was uh, a little bit uh, what I would probably say was not the bestest it could have been done but i can safely say that it was very good the way they interacted and i could say they definitely felt like two doctors and that was the first time in series 12 it finally felt like jodie Whitaker was more of the doctor and i think we started to get a little bit of that in resolution but it was good to see that jodie Whitaker was the doctor she was very good um yeah the thing that I do come to now is the main big one. <sighs> Built in the lie of the timeless child. The timeless child. Now, what did I think of um, the uh, ascension of the Cyberman, Cybermen, and um, the timeless children? Um, what did I think? I thought. 
well answered where roof came from, and that's actually quite good. But the main thing that really annoyed me was a little bit how did the doctor how did what how did that how did the doctor just come like that and all that stuff and all the different incarnations i can understand why they went but now it's making the doctor look like well i don't know like she's being praised by the time lords but why wouldn't have the doctor been told this why wouldn't have he been told this or any of that um i don't know and why was it kept in that secret with Brendan being shot on the island? I would actually, actually like that if it turned out it was just some Irish guy called Brendan who was the time of child. I feel like that would have been a much better route. And if you stuck with that the whole way through, you, we could have got something great. We could have done. And it's just a shame that it didn't happen. But, um... So it's a little bit of a shame. But at least it answered all of the questions. Sorry about that, there was just loads of noise and I had to turn my camera off. Um, yeah, so uh, what I can mainly say is, uh, we're getting towards the end of the video now, so I can kind of say that The Timeless Children was a little bit controversial, but I enjoyed it in certain areas. I do finally uh, find out something that J J Martin fits into the canon somewhere, and I'm really happy about that. And I really would like to see more of this Doctor. Hopefully in Series 13 we'll see some some more. But now it's answered all the questions really we kind of needed on her. Maybe a few bits will be more discussed. But I'm just super happy with how that turned out really. But um, more to the point like who is Tech Taeyun? Who Who is all of this other stuff? Uh, why did she want to discover a generation? All that sort of stuff. Will probably be answered even more going on through the series. And the big discussion, is she Rassilon, is she Omega, or any of those people we don't we don't know yet at this point. But hopefully we'll probably find out. But now I'm just going to be talking about High Hopes for Series 13. Now, I hope that John Bishop, who's going to play the Doctor, does it extremely well. I hope... No. Sorry, that was wrong. Uh, I hope that... Uh, John Bishop in Doctor Who is going to be brilliant and I hope that he's a really good companion and I hope he's better than Yasmin Khan who I didn't really talk about at all during the video partly because we still don't really know who she is and I don't really want to know to be honest she's leaving at the end of the series anyway and so is Jodie Whittaker and so is Chris Chibnall so yeah and um yeah, my hopes are that he does have a few run-ins with the Sontarans, and hopefully he gets, like, a hammer and smashes them on the back of the head. And, uh, yeah, so I hope all that sort of stuff happens. And uh, this new character, Zendo, I think he's going to be some weird companion. I hope he does a good job, uh, but um, good luck to him. Apparently he's supposed to be some weird alien-y thing, I don't know. But I hope he does a good job, anyway, nevertheless. And, um, also the other stuff, um... The specials that we're going to get at the end, uh, somewhere in the middle of 2022. I hope they're good. And um, finally, we get to say goodbye to Jodie Whittaker and say hello to the new Doctor, who I hope is Chris Marshall. I really hope that, to be honest. And that's kind of it on that bit, on that part. So, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed the video, and subscribe to keep up to date with all my latest news and reviews, and all sorts of stuff like that. So, hope you all enjoyed my video, and goodbye, and see you soon.